First, I would like to thank the Oxford Union for the invitation. In preparation for tonight, I've watched a few videos of the online uh, Thursday night debates, and I was not only struck by the number of prestigious speakers that have come be found before me, but also by how much fun everyone was having. So, once again, thank you to the Oxford Union for the invitation. I'm humbled, I'm honored, and dare I say, stimulated. I will be speaking tonight from my experience from adult film production, otherwise known as porn. Short for pornography. The Oxford Dictionary defines pornography as printed or visual material containing the explicit description or display of sexual organs or activity intimidated, intended to stimulate erotic rather than aesthetic or emotional feelings. Tonight, I am proud to represent the individuals and businesses who create the materials designed to stimulate erotic feelings. The question, should sex work, or in this case, creation of content designed, designed for erotic stimulation, have the same value as traditional or conventional professions? My response is absolutely not. It should have more. <laughs> While often marginalized, this industry does more to push the boundaries of misguided morality and destructive stigmatism than any other industry. Let's start with women. Porn challenges sexual convention for women like no other. Our society dictates sexuality for women in a way that is judgmental, controlling, and restrictive. It's no wonder that 30% of women have never had an orgasm. This with bodies that are designed to have multiple orgasms. <laughs> No wonder that Fifty Shades of Grey is so successful. Women are the fastest growing consumers of porn. And in porn, you can see women who like sex, who celebrate sex, who are unabashedly sex sexually aggressive. Many argue that porn performers are damaged, that to, be, that to be in porn, these women have to either be victims or sluts. They can't possibly know what they're doing. Before working at the Free Speech Coalition, I worked for Planned Parenthood. It's, an ages, it's the US's largest reproductive health and women's rights organization. As a feminist, I have been fighting for women's rights my entire life. I find it hypocritical and appalling that the so-called feminists who argue to death for, that women are capable of deciding whether or not to have an abortion believe that these very same women somehow lose all sense of an ability to discern when it comes to performing an adult film. My experience is that adult performers are some of the most empowered, independent, unapologetically confident women I have ever met. There are numerous examples of successful women in porn, both in front and behind the camera. Joanna Angel put herself through Rutgers from, the, from her university dorm room with her webcam. Now the fan, founder of Burning Angel, a multi-million dollar production company, Joanna still performs. And standing at just five feet tall, she's an industry giant. Jessica Drake, exclusive performer for Wicked Pictures. She calls, uh, she calls her own, um, sorry, created her own video line of content, Jessica Drake's Guide to Wicked Sex. She's helping viewers with sexual growth. Jessica tours the country speaking at college campuses about sexual health, communication, and pleasure. While I'm in the UK, I cannot help but to speak of some of this country's performers. While at a press conference in the US, I was fortunate enough to meet Tanya Tate. Tanya is an incredible woman and extremely successful. If you look at her website, you will discover that, and I quote, Though she remains one of the industry's most sought-after performers, Tanya has exploded, exploded into the directing scene. Often found behind the camera in Philly films, Tanya's movies are ever popular and continue to excite fans. She has recently started directing at Penthouse. Tanya keeps in touch with her fans using social media and her self-run hardcore website, tanyatate.com. She personalizes all of her goodies that she sends out to her fans, 
from her Tanya Tate casting couch DVD launched by her own Tanya Tate label to custom movies and webcam. Tanya ensures everything has her Tanya Tate stamp of approval. On top of an impressive career as an adult actress, she is also owner and operator of the PR firm Star Factory. Tanya has proven a remarkable success in all facets of the industry. Stories like this are not uncommon in the adult in entertainment industry. Today's adult entertainment industry is nothing like your grandfather's porn. Today's typical female adult performer averages about $1,000 a shoot. That's twice what men make in the same shoot. She understands that her performer name is her brand, and adult performers are brilliant at marketing their brand. No one understands and maximizes on social media better than an adult performer. Performers take control and lead their careers through campsites, social media, live streaming, performances, content trades, their own websites, and affiliate programs. Women are in the leadership and women are directors, women are spokespersons, company owners, and the driving force in front and behind cameras. Female influence is not only apparent in the creators of, in the creators of the porn, but also in the porn itself, as, as represented by the Feminist Porn Awards and the feminist porn, burgeoning feminist porn industry. Gay porn. Another uh, important aspect of the adult film industry. While gay men typically are not as sexually suppressed as women, the stigmatization of gay sex continues. Granted, while so society is beginning to be more accepting of the LGBT community, we are still far from full acceptance. And many gay men have reported that watching gay porn gives them a sense of belonging. I remember my first adult expo. There were booths set up all over the place with a variety of porn gen genres. There was a huge crowd in, in front of one of the booths. And, and I made my way through, and there I saw this very large woman in a G-string and pasties. She was about 135 kil kilograms, and she was beautiful. She was sexy, she was confident, she loved her body, as did the crowd. Can you imagine Hollywood ever embracing a woman that size? <laughs> no, I live in Hollywood, I know. It completely breaks all, of this, all the stereotypes of what we are told is sexy. That's the great thing about porn. It's a place of belonging. Understanding likes and dislikes in porn is, is an individualized thing. It's similar to understanding the likes and dislikes of food. When I walk into a restaurant and look at the menu, I choose what is of interest to me, which, which will be different than the person sitting next to me. I don't like peas and carrots. Uh, no, so much to say, so little time. And I won't choose to eat them. When you look at the broad menu available in porn, you can find BBW, big beautiful women. You can find ethnic porn, disabled porn, gay porn, lesbian porn, transgender porn, people with foot fetishes, cross-dressers, BDSM, cosplay, and even vanilla straight porn. While everything on the menu will not be appealing to everyone, there is a sense of belonging. Something for everyone, something for every shape, size, color, sexual orientation, sexual identity. The opposition will try to saddle porn with all of the ills of the world, from rapes to sex trafficking, as we heard earlier today. Briefly addressing these topics, the minuscule amount of porn that depicts rape appeals to a small group of people. Just like I don't like slasher horror films where people are murderously mangled, Rape porn is peas and carrots to me. And research has shown, just like watching the Texas Chainsaw Massacre doesn't send people into lumberjack-type murdering sprees, rape porn does not increase the incident of rape, quite, quite the contrary. Furthermore, associating porn with sex trafficking is like, is, is like associating aspirin manufacturers with drug trafficking. The business and professionals I represent abhor sex trafficking and believe that anyone who participates in human trafficking of any kind should be prosecuted to the full extent of the law. That is a crime. We agree with that. Point taken. Porn adult film projection is all about consent, which means legal age, non-coerced, 
able-minded, no drugs or alcohol. So I challenge the opposition to try, not to try and distract from the topic with the smoke and mirrors of blaming the porn, of porn and prostitution for all of the ills of the world and focus on the question at hand. Is sex work, and in this case, the creation of adult films, as valuable a profession as more conventional, traditional prof professions? as the content unabashedly challenges stigmas, misguided morality, bigotry, and sexism, I would argue that it's more valuable. Thank you very much.